the Building and Facilities Construction Committee meeting of Wednesday, July 19th, 2023. It will be called to order at 4 o'clock. We have um, two people on Zoom. <clears throat> um, you want to please give your name? Ray? Uh, Ray McClaws. Fred? Fred Fontaine. Linda Brown. Shirley Masinski, and we have the um, administrator with us, Matt Wojcik. Um, uh, yes. And uh, Bob Wormy has called me. He will be not be available. He's excused. <laughs> the first item on the agenda, uh, we will have a discussion, and maybe Matt can inform us of any progress regarding the Board of Selectmen assignment, needs assessment, and fe feasibility considerations supporting options for public safety and or highway department building projects. Matt? So, <coughs> I will <coughs> say that up to this point, it has been nothing but a pleasure to work with Weston and Sampson. They are very thorough, very attentive. We've had several meetings. Uh, we had a long meeting this morning with them. Uh, they came into town, they walked the different properties. They've, they've, they've walked all the properties several times. They were able to walk an additional set of potential properties today. That is good. <coughs> so I'm glad to hear that. They have this zoning report, which they have submitted for what is looking like is going to be their recommendation. Um, this recommendation may involve you know, a substantial amount of activity by the select board and the town administrator's office to secure yeah. properties in addition to our own. Mm -hmm. And there's a process I went through with the select board last time, at not the meeting last night, but the prior, prior meeting where I described the steps that we would have to go through to acquire a unique piece of real estate that we need for a public purpose. Um, and that's not a taking that's the method of procurement that sure. you would use to, to pay a fair market price um, after a process. But the goal here has been to uh, find a site with an appropriate amount of space for the various and sundry operations of the highway department, including a salt barn. Uh, we are supposed to be enclosing and managing our sand supply mm -hmm. and a lot of the other issues that you guys have heard uh, mm -hmm. us describe on these different things. So they have a favored recommendation for a, a piece to, to look carefully at. And I will be, uh, I think they're going to update this based on their trip today. And we will be, I think, meeting an executive session at the select board level to determine what next steps would be on, on the land. But as far as uh, the actual building for a highway barn, so there's been this conceptual drawing done. That it's you know, allocation of space and, and what they think we can afford with our budget mm -hmm. and, and how they go about uh, housing our equipment and housing our people. So, you know, it's a highway barn. It's, it's sure. a fairly straightforward design. It's not going to have anything by way of bells and whistles. It just needs to work for mm -hmm. us. And so I think we are still very much on track, Madam Chair, to have a proposal for town meeting to consider at fall town meeting in November. That is still the goal, to have a conceptual mm -hmm. design with uh, as good an estimate as you can get at that 30% at design mm -hmm. that would inform a financial package for potential borrowing okay. uh, for a bond issue. So. Okay. That is still very much where we are. I don't see any reason to think that we won't hit it based on this level of effort. So mm -hmm. provided they keep tripping along like this, it's good good stuff. Good. Okay. Questions, Linda? Yes, yeah, so the um, procurement, if we had to buy land, all that could be done prior to fall meeting or? So an interest in real property must be brought to town meeting. Mm -hmm. So if we were going to put that into the project costs, we would have to have a going through the steps of appraisal and other things that we need to do. But nothing set in stone yet? Okay. Nothing set in stone Okay. okay. Um, um, Ray, do you have any questions? We got it in. I do not. Nope. Okay. And Fred? 
Is he there? No, no questions. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, I'm glad to see that things are moving along and uh, keep us posted, as I know you will. All right, the next item is the uh, status of the oil spill. And last meeting, um, they had taken one more sample, and but no results. Do you have results? No. So they are, we are still pending with them. Okay. Green? I did settle an invoice. I signed a warrant that included uh, the final closeout on the actual day tank itself, okay. so the, the project, uh, but not on the, the oil spill. So we're still waiting for, they go through a process, they basically call it, it's, it's a risk assessment, mm -hmm. and the environmental consultant who does that specific work is still working on our sample. Okay. Hopefully it'll be done soon and we can move that off. It would be nice to check yes. it out. Um, next item is green communities. Nothing additional to report there. Okay. Item C is municipal backup generator. So as previously mentioned in other meetings, we are, we're in line for a generator and the whole project is on hold until a generator is available. And which looks like it's going to be early spring. Late wow. winter, early spring, so uh, somewhere between January and March. Wow. Any questions? Anybody regarding the no questions. delay on the generator? Okay. Next item is municipal main roof replacement. So we've had a lot of activity here. Uh, Weston and Sampson is helping us with this. Uh, so they took this on as our house doctor and uh, largely as a result of our question or our asking them to because we found that there were some elements of the roof project that required a design professional to address. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically some of the copper flashing and the lead soldering that holds it all together and the manner in which the existing roof membrane was attached to the parapet. <clears throat> so uh, Weston and Sampson has now I want to call this more like 70% design. So I will be scanning and sending members of the committee this document that I only got a couple hours ago and mm -hmm. I've been otherwise occupied and haven't had a chance to copy it. Uh, the font will be very small, which is why I'll send you a PDF so that if you open it on your computer, you'll be able to zoom in and read it. Sure. Uh, it has a cost estimate. Um, the cost estimate will differ from the amount that was approved by town meeting for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is the architect is recommending a more durable roofing material. Uh, it's called PVC. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. uh, familiar with, with it. As opposed to the rubber membrane that we have there now. Uh, it is a difference between a 15 or 20 year life on a rubber membrane to more like a 30 year life on PVC. Oh. Uh, the PVC is heat welded and is a little bit easier to repair. Mm -hmm. And the contractors, the, the manufacturers in this field are, they're known for their track record honoring their warranties and coming out to verify that the warranty is still in place when other work is done by other people on the roof. So. <clears throat> I like that they're thinking about our long-term interests mm -hmm. and realizing that building is, we're going to use this building for as yeah. long as anybody can imagine, so it should have a great roof on it. The feedback that we gave them today is we want to make sure that they solve the problem of the snow and ice that sheets down to the front of the building and over our walkways. Um, it's kind of like a French guillotine in 17, whatever that was, 1791. Uh, Mr. Robespierre does not work here. Uh, <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so um, some combination of a gutter and either a bar or some um, applied, you know, little pieces of plastic that will keep the snow from, and ice from sliding down into okay. the gutter yep. until it's melted, <clears throat> that system would be added to this design uh, so that we, we don't have that problem anymore. We don't have the dripping uh -huh. onto the concrete 
walkway and below, which freezes and it yeah. creates another hazard for, for residents coming in the building and employees. So the delta here between what we have from town meeting and what we think we may need, so what the architect is telling us we should budget is about $70,000. Part of that is the escalation of costs. So even if we had <coughs> gone with a less expensive roofing solution in terms of materials, <coughs> that material itself is much more expensive now than it was pre-COVID mm -hmm. or immediately after COVID when we went to town meeting for the funds. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is still an absolutely necessary project, so mm -hmm. the goal would be to put it on a fall town meeting and, and ask for supplement. Um, the project estimate does include, though, the elevator roof. Oh, good. So we will try to do it all at once. Okay. So that, I think that's a relief that it's yeah. not an ad alternate. We're, we're going to make it part of the solution. Right. So you'll see that when it comes through. Uh, we've pecked away at a couple of cost items. Uh, the highway department feels like they can handle the, the repointing the masonry on the chimney on their own, which I would tend to agree. It's not a really big piece of masonry, and you know it's something that's within their skill set to handle. So we're going to go that that option, and we can repoint it before the new roof is put on. So we're going to leave the curbing there. So even if we are only using two of the four roof units, we will leave that roof penetration and the okay. curbing around it available so that if we wanted to get two more units we could do it and um, it would be part of our warranty you know the, the way it's set up mm -hmm. would be a warrantied setup and rather than having a HVAC contractor come and redo the penetration to the roof cutting up our roof no 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 so we're going to leave it open um, are there any questions we're no. still looking to get this bid out for a fall town installation. Okay. Any questions, Ray, yeah, Fred? No Fred, are you no, there? No okay. Um, so I, I can't remember the amount that's in that budget, so how much are you? I think, don't quote me exactly on this, Madam yeah. Chair, but okay. I think we had 345 for the big roof and 90 for the small roof okay. from town meeting. So that's 435. Uh -huh. all, that's all we got. Then when these guys came back with, now this is going to be a challenge for me because it's a really tiny font. They put these um, wonderful magnifying glasses on our phones now. Has <laughs> to see it, what it's looking at, though. Not entirely sure. All right, here we go. So this came in at four fifty-two, three sixty-three fifty-eight. Would you that repeat is, that again, please? Okay, four five two. Yeah. Three six three. Yeah. And 58 cents that they promised not to spend all in one place. <laughs> uh, that is that is exclusive of their design fee. So the design fee is, okay. let's say it's another thirty-five thousand dollars, and that's why we're over. So our original estimate was based mostly on a membrane roof with yeah. no architectural support. We were just going to have the roofing company spec it out and do it. Yeah, it was nice thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but it didn't work out. It's and how not, many years ago was it's two or three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, with, right. With a lot of these things, we learn as we go along what the best approach is going to be. Mm -hmm. It's different than what our original estimate was. Sure. Um, gotcha. All right. Everybody, good with that information? Yep. Okay. Thanks. You'll keep us posted. And yep. All right. Next item is municipal fire alarm. Again, not to be done until the roof is done, right? Right, so, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't start thinking about it. And I think we'll be, once we're out to bid on the roof, the roof design will be in place. And the way the timing of this would work, we would want the alarm to come and get upgraded in the winter after the 
roof is installed. So we'll start to put together a procurement. Just, uh, you know, if we want to get down in the weeds, we are changing our phone system here in the town hall. Yeah. Uh, that was an ARPA funded project. Good. We, we have a number of phone lines that are associated with the alarm. We've identified them and we will not be accidentally turning them off. <laughs> Just want everybody to be assured we will yep. have phone lines. <laughs> okay. Um, for that alarm. All right, so we can be looking towards doing something finally with the municipal fire yeah. alarm. Uh, the existing alarm is still functioning. I just okay. want to assure people that it's yeah. tested on a regular basis. They were just here last week and it passed. Okay, good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay, next item, item F, fire station upgrade and HVAC generator electrical. So this is another place where we've had a lot of activity. Um, so uh, McRitchie's gotten much more attentive to us okay. in the, since your last meeting. Yeah, oh good. And we've had no fewer than three meetings with them since your last meeting. Uh, one of them here, uh -huh. you know, physically present, and the other two online conference calls. And um, we've gone over the scope of work a little bit. I think when we originally had a conversation about HVAC, we were in quasi-emergency mode because mm -hmm. we wanted to address employee health concerns. Mm -hmm. And it was basically give us a project that will address those concerns and let's not get too thoughtful about all of the other problems in the building. Now that we've had a chance to settle down a little bit and we've put the temporary structures outside so we're, we've removed the threat to our employees uh, and made them more comfortable, it is nice to have an air-conditioned space to sleep in mm -hmm. the summer uh, <clears throat> but still right there at the station. We've, we've taken a, a, a thought about energy efficiency as well as safety. That's good. And, you know, originally <clears throat> the conversation with Bruce was you know, his assumption was we would leave all the mechanicals in place if they were working mm -hmm. and just not deal with that and just deal with air quality issues and basically make up air, refreshing conditioned air into the, into the space to get rid of contaminated air. And now we've been a little bit more thoughtful about uh, do we really need a 900,000 BTU boiler for that building? And the answer is we need more like a 600,000 BTU okay. boiler for that building. Green communities did come in and insulate the roof of this building with blow-in insulation that was and some weatherization around the sill plate and everything else. So that's something that we needed to do, not around the sill plate, around the um, uh, parts of the roof that had not been insulated yeah. when the building was originally built. Okay. And so we will try to the best of our ability to still use existing ductwork for some of the exhaust to get uh -huh. air out of the, of the building because that is that has been installed when the building was built. But now we want to use you know more mechanicals. We will not be using heat pump technology. Uh, the recommendation from the engineer is that heat pump technology doesn't fit this building. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> there would be, it would be oversized for cooling and probably undersized for heating. So it would constantly be running on the coil and calling for backup heat. Mm -hmm. And then in the summer, it would be in this weird, They their professional judgment is that it would run, it would super cool the building because it was oversized. Sure. It would shut off and then it would come, and the building so poorly insulated that it would just be constantly on and off, on and off, on and off, and that the, the useful life of the appliance would be diminished greatly. Mm -hmm. So we are going to have properly sized standard a AC units, compressors, not heat pumps. We will keep a boiler, a smaller, more energy efficient boiler, primarily for the bays, mm -hmm. okay. the equipment bays, and use existing, you know, heating fixtures to circulate hot water, hot air. Um, there is a small hot water system there that supports the main heating system, but we feel like that will be the more energy efficient solution for the building. Um, um, <clears throat> we're not going to go. So one last thing. Yeah, sure. 
We're not going to go with a condensing boiler, which would be a propane fired boiler. It's very efficient, uh, just because propane on a cost basis yeah. is almost the same cost per gallon as number two oil, but it contains far less BTU potential. So we would be spending actually more money to heat the space with a fossil fuel. So we might as well just stick with the more efficient. Plus I can use the diesel in our trucks and buy a bigger quantity and get us a better price when we do go up. Then okay. that's the idea. My, my question was, um, so that's going to also cover the um, place where they uh, overnight so once we resolve the air issues, yeah. we're going to send those units back to right. Will Scott, and the people will move back inside. But I mean, as far as the furnace goes, the heat. So I think, Madam Chair, don't quote me because I haven't seen a, I've only seen a schematic plan and we sent them back to the drawing board on it. One of the live options, so a little bit more context. McRitchie's not an architect. Mm -hmm. It's an HVAC engineering and electrical engineering firm. So they, when we originally, when they quoted us a design fee, mm -hmm. they had a reservation for $5,000 for an architect to review the layouts and to do some basic design work around closing up some space. They wanted to close up the workout space. Mm -hmm. And Bruce's concern is adjacencies, right? So it's more efficient to have all of the sleeping quarters together, even if you have to separate them for rank or for gender or for whatever reason right. you want to separate them. Uh, but have them all on one side of the building so they're sharing the same heating okay. and cooling. Uh, and then use the space on the other side of the, of the building for whatever, for storage or, or for the workout space. Whatever. Sure. And so Bruce's recommendation and we spoke to Weston and Sam is like, we don't want to overburden you guys. <laughs> Seems like you're our go-to's, but you are our go-to. We hired you to be right. house doctor. And this is not a big lift. This is, you know, mm -hmm. hanging studs, figuring out where electrical receptacles go and, and how it all fits with the mm -hmm. heating and cooling project. But can you do it? And so they they said they would explore that possibility. They have the capacity to do it for us. Okay. So <clears throat> in terms of Weston and Samson. So Weston and Sampson is going to backfill okay. the architectural portion of McRitchie's contract which was already budgeted for. I don't know if they'll come in at a, what we budgeted, but right. there was money set aside for architectural work. And once Bruce finishes, then Howard will pick up with all the electrical specifications from HVAC and bring it to a conclusion. You know, I fear that the only delay here will be the generator, because yeah. we haven't ordered it yet, because we haven't Ooh. sized it yet, because we haven't finished the load estimate because it's kind of contingent on heating and cooling. Yeah. Um, all these conditions precedent. Now, having said that, that generator is likely to be in a size that's easier to obtain than the size of the generator that we're put. We have a very large generator coming for this building. Yeah. Uh, this will be much more manageable. So I cautiously, optimistic, crush your thumb, crush your fingers, knock on wood. Um, but we are still on track. And I, again, I think we have learned more from having more conversations and more. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's a healthy process. We've mm -hmm. been thinking through options and getting very clear answers on what options are better than others. And mm -hmm. it'll be the best solution for the town in the end, rather than just rushing forward with the, what we think is cost effective. Right. So. Okay. All right. Questions, anybody? No. Linda, Ray, Fred. Any questions? No okay. No questions. Thank you. Uh, good information, and hopefully it'll all move along and be within budgets. And <laughs> right, opera funding and qualification discussion. Um, We're still making progress on individual components mm -hmm. of the ARPA funded projects. The uh, the phone system that was funded by the select board is partially rolled out, so water, sewer, some of our smaller outlying buildings have already been converted. Uh, Dave can probably hear me in the other room. Uh, he just got all of our uh, security codes for their existing phone system here for okay. police and town hall. So now that we have them, we can convert this building. So there may be a brief time 
in the next couple of weeks that our phones are down at town hall for a couple of hours mm -hmm. uh, but <clears throat> we're moving over to a a more reliable configuration which is voice over internet protocol for telephones uh, that are designed to talk to each other so now all of our buildings will be on an intercom mm -hmm. uh, direct dial situation and we don't have to dial 1508 Douglas Public Schools <laughs> so we'll be we'll be together with all of our outbuildings and with the school department so we'll all have a extension okay. numbers that we can call each other on okay. um, and the, the vendor's name is Granite, and they have a statewide contract, and this was that's how this was procured, was through the statewide contract price. So not out to bid? No. Good. Okay. Now, on the security cameras, we are going to have to go out to bid. Um, <clears throat> and we are going to have to pay. So Granite is in the same business. Now, we had them in the building doing phones. And they were. They said, "Well, let's take a look at your security cameras, and we'll talk about the capacity of your 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 wide area network and all the rest of it." Sure. And we're very grateful for the work, and they did a lot of thoughtful conversations about the design of the security system, and gave us enough information where we can go to bid. Uh, okay. So the the specifications are written at a, a level of detail where between a materials list and a labor estimate, mm -hmm. uh, a reasonable contractor should be able to, to respond to the request for, for proposals okay. uh, or invitation for bids. The glitch is that Granite is not a certified electronic security system installer in Massachusetts. Okay. So originally this was almost like they would design it and they would take a risk that somebody else would win the bid, but they weren't really interested in being compensated for their design because they thought they had the inside, you know, that they had a, a good, strong proposal to come into the bid process with. But when I went to the, so it's called the Division of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance at the state level, or DCAM, people are familiar mm -hmm. with that. If you're not DCAM certified and as an electronic security installer, you cannot do this work. There mm -hmm. is no subcontracting allowed. Granite doesn't have the Massachusetts State Police and other certifications necessary to do this work. And of course, we're dealing with our schools, yeah. so we don't really want to do anything less than perfect, and that's understandable. So what I said to them is I, I don't feel right walking around with your design mm -hmm. and, and using it to attract bidders and you can't bid. Mm -hmm. So give me some estimate of the amount of hours you put into designing this, and it'll be under 10,000, I'm sure, uh, dollars. But I want to compensate you for it because I want to own the plans. Mm -hmm. So then when I go to the the eventual successful bidder, I want to be able to show them the plans and, and, and use it as work product and not be you know, liable in any way to you as the designer because mm -hmm. you're not involved. So they're willing to do that. So that's, that's going to get rolled into the way the project is funded and paid for. But it's really hard to do a security system bid process without knowing how many cameras you're going to have, what kind, yeah. you know, how much cabling needs to be done. You just you have to go through that process. And, yep. uh, okay. I had I had hopes that they had a statewide contract. It's really hard to figure out the statewide contracts in this area, but they just they don't have one. So that's where I'm at. I got to start from a little bit earlier stage in the process. The other ARPA-funded stuff um, includes this water right. discussion here on Depot Street. That's ongoing, but <clears throat> we've got these folks from Stantec really running <laughs> uh -huh. pretty hard with lots of things around town. And uh, so while we, we are going to still meet the ARPA deadlines, we're going to finish what they're doing downtown here uh, before we really put the... Uh, the thumb on them to get this design project done. Although they are aware of it, they've staffed it and they've estimated their staff hours to do it. <clears throat> um, and this is not ARPA funds, but just tangentially related. I was remiss last night, I didn't give an update to the select board on this, but I'll, I can do it here. It's, we thought we were going to be paving North Street and most of Gilboa at the end of this month and the beginning of next month. It's probably going to be more like the fall. Um, 
we have this interesting dynamic where our Mass Works grant and the project that's specified under the Mass Works grant program, we are on budget, which means we're we're not going to really turn back much. Mm -hmm. This paving is part of that project, and we want to do a change order because we want to build North Street properly. We don't want to just put a skim coat of pavement over it and call it done. Mm -hmm. That would be irresponsible at this point. The granite curbing has almost no reveal left on the road. <clears throat> so what that means is that the road's been paved so many times that the mm -hmm. curbing and sidewalk is only a couple of inches above the road surface, okay. which causes stormwater management and other issues uh, around safety of that sidewalk. It really should be substantially higher. So the contractor came back and said the most intelligent way to do this is to actually do a deep grind uh, mm -hmm. and, and okay. almost 12 inches worth here, mm -hmm. and then put down a, a solid base coat, a finish coat over the top of that, and then you'll leave your your six inch reveal or whatever you want on your granite curbstones on that Hayward landing side of the road, especially where the sidewalk mm -hmm. is. That change order takes us over budget on MassWorks. But on the EDA side, the low bidder came in far below the budget. And even though there's been a couple of changes, they've been insignificant in terms of the overall budget. So we have more surplus in our EDA project then we have cost remaining in the MassWorks project. And so we have gone to the EDA and said, will you allow us to take project component, a discrete project component that stands on its own, it's paving, from the MassWorks project and bring it over to EDA funding? We think we make a good case because we would still be within the matching requirement. So in other words, we have enough mm -hmm. MassWorks funds pledged as the match to the EDA grant to maintain the 80-20 ratio, even if we add the paving of Gilboa and North to the EDA funded portion of the project. Um, the paving would protect the EDA funded project, which is the sewer line. So just it's easy to remember, water is MassWorks, sewer was EDA. So this sewer line is under this roadway that's going to be repaved. So we're thinking that's the nexus, right? You want us to build a proper roadway over the sewer line you just funded. So um, we're cautiously optimistic that the EDA will allow us to do this. We would still be giving them quite a bit of money back wow. from the grant. So that's, like I say, cautiously optimistic. Mm -hmm. Plan B is our private partners have pledged to support this project with X number of dollars. We have not drawn that down yet. So if we had to go to them and say, will you fund this pavement project with your pledge, we believe they would honor that because it would be way below what they've pledged us. So okay. <clears throat> I think we've got two good, strong options. This isn't really your bailiwick, but this is a good opportunity for mm -hmm. me to talk about it because that's why we haven't fully engaged the Depot Street project yet because we're still sorting out this sure. complexity down here. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, the, the town is going to end up with a really well thought out roadway plan for North, Northeast and Gilboa with brand new pavement on all three of those streets. Okay. We are talking about <clears throat> some additional signage on the corner of North and Gilboa mm -hmm. as an attempt to address some of the safety problems at that intersection. It's one of our most dangerous intersections in town. Mm -hmm. We do not meet a warrant for a signalized intersection there. We don't even come close. So we still have to make this work with stop signs and mm -hmm. other devices. You have had an engineering firm that came through our regional planning agency and did the all the design work. So they're at 90% design for mm -hmm. signs, striping, other visible sign uh, okay. cues. You know, a lot of times out-of-town folks who are not familiar with this intersection are heading westbound on Gilboa and they think they have to stop. Yeah. So they stop. Someone's at another one of the three corners who had to stop thinks, oh, that person is an out-of-town or doesn't know what they're doing, I'm just going to go. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the guy who thought he had to stop realizes he didn't have to stop, now he goes, and now we have an intersection, yep. a, a, a collision. So <laughs> very understandable, and I can swear if you stand there, for more than 30 minutes, you will see it happen at least twice. Yes. Yep. So we're going to try to do more advanced warning, stop ahead, 
Okay. Uh, you know, clearing branches so the stop sign is visible from, from an earlier point of view. Right. And try to get everybody to realize it is a three-way stop. It's unusual, but it is a feature of the town that we don't really think we need. We, the problem with a four-way stop there is we might, Gilboa is so busy, mm -hmm. we may end up queuing more traffic on Gilboa than we want. Okay. So right now, allowing people to turn a left onto north without having to stop keeps traffic flowing through a high volume area. Mm -hmm. With the passage of time, that may end up being a roundabout anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so that's my only other piece of update is, again, this is more of a select board issue, but I'll, I'll bring it to you is Thank you. We are at uh, the design, pretty far down the design phase for the traffic interchange at the new bridge, which, you know, could be the Mozinski Bridge for all we know. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, we, could, we could name it after Mike Cahill or something. You know. Anyway, it's a uh, nice bridge. If you see what they've done there, the decking, and they've done stamped concrete to make it, the stonework match the dam. Mm -hmm. So the Oh, nice. The visual appearance of the stamps is about the same size as the blocks in the dam. So there was a thought put into what this thing will look like once all the guardrail comes down and you can actually see it. Will we own the bridge or do they? No, they will own the bridge. They will maintain it and plow it and sand it. That is their okay. problem. Private road all right. and all the utilities, the all the conduits that start under that bridge, they own that too. Okay. Uh, so that's the good news. The feeling is the traffic engineer feels like they need a left-hand only turn lane for trucks. And they're making it 240 feet deep. So that's basically three semi-trailers would be able to queue in a left-hand only turn lane as you come down the hill on Gilboa. So they would peel off to go onto the bridge. You would stay in your westbound lane and you would not have to stop. Our feedback to them is, but what about eastbound? Mm -hmm. Now the the bridge was des was designed, and the whole interchange is designed to force traffic to go right onto 146. On, onto Gilboa okay. to go to 146. Okay. okay. So a truck driver would be have to be out of his or her mind yeah. to try to navigate a left-hand turn onto Gilboa. That doesn't mean they won't try, and it doesn't mean they won't fail, but everything that could possibly be done to force them to go right has been done. So you'll notice when you see the bridge, it has the right-hand turn built into the curvature of the bridge to take you right up. It's going to take you up onto an incline. Sure. And if you have driven a truck, or if you're familiar with people who drive trucks, that is an unpleasant circumstance. Yeah. Because now you're going from not a dead stop, but say you're rolling five, ten miles an hour with a semi-trailer and coming onto a single lane road uphill in the winter, there may need to be an acceleration lane set aside for them so they can get up to a better speed before they get onto Gilboa Street. That is an open discussion with the traffic engineer. But I have a question about sure. that. So Linda? trouble with a hill going up about hill coming down it's icy are they going to be coming right out onto Gilboa if they can't stop is it a right across no okay so the bridge won't be level it'll be like maybe come up a little before it gets to Gilboa I think if you go out there now and look at it you'll see that uh, it's built into it's built into the contour of the, the okay. hill there okay. so we're not running a bridge flat into yeah. the hill we're they're going to start climbing before they even take their turn. Um, I'm just worried about the exit. Yeah. If they so so are we. So yeah. are we. So we're going to, you know, we're trying to get them to talk to us about it. But uh, mm -hmm. it's hard for people to see from the street. I realize that. But that building is going up faster than you can oh, imagine. Oh, yeah. You can mm -hmm. see the building. So three walls are up now. <coughs> or the better part of three walls are up, and they're making progress towards the final corner. Mm -hmm. And they've been doing steel and roofing as they progress with the walls. Okay. So it's 24 plus acres under roof, which if you're following at home, if you're a Navy veteran, that is six Nimitz class aircraft carriers <laughs> would fit inside this building. So it's pretty cool to see it go up. 
to see anybody move equipment that big and slabs of concrete that big is mm -hmm. pretty impressive for anyone to ever add Tonka toys. <laughs> uh, Questions? Anyone? No, my only um, yep. my only Go ahead, comment Ray. about security cameras yep. is I actually work for a manufacturer, um, so I'm not sure at some point whether I need to recluse myself from that or um, if I could volunteer my services or recommendations at some point. Um, obviously, I don't want it to be a conflict of interest as well. Um, it's just so be willing to make that offer if that's the case. And, uh, I don't have to be camera specific or manufacturer specific, but certainly locations that uh, can assist in that if I need to or can. Yeah, so that is absolutely allowed and above board and very welcome. So Thank we you. would really want that. The only thing you can't okay. do is, it, it's, it's for me to do anyway, and yeah. that is to draft the specs. Mm -hmm. We don't specify proprietary specs anyway, uh, mm -hmm. although it may be helpful for you and the best way to do it would be an open session uh, of, since you are a member of a public body, um, help me as a procurement officer understand if there's a really big difference between the different capabilities okay. of different manufacturers' units. Okay. Uh, and whether or not we can specify capabilities within a range so that we're not specking out a proprietary solution. Okay. So. Ray can talk to you. Yep. Contact. So the Ray. draft spec, I can circulate the draft spec. Sure. Okay. Thank you. No problem. I have a yes, question Linda? about the um, North Street paving. Is currently there's water running down North Street, two large areas. And in the wintertime, it freezes right over. I think it's just coming out of the lawns. It might be just high water table or something but it's not due to all the rain we had because it even runs during a drought it never so dries are you on the upper portion of north street as you if go you're towards heading, Sutton? like towards walmart yeah it's on the left side coming out of the left oh, we're painfully aware of that that is groundwater yeah because to, to pave that road it's only going to keep undermining it yeah so that's not the portion we're paving we're paving from oh. the corner of gilboa and north up to main street so by Hayward Landing, by what used to be a restaurant, then it was an insurance place, now I think it is an insurance, is that ripple effect in there? And then it takes that tight turn next to the, uh, so just so there's a Civil War Memorial there on the corner. Yeah, okay. okay. So that's so a that short portion. We, we do have, so Mr. Manerick and others are working on a site readiness grant for the other portion of North Street. The longer if, portion. Right, the much longer portion, if pine sand and gravel is developed, that roadway will have to be redesigned. So we've met with residents of that street by invitation at the high school and went over the preliminary thoughts. Okay. Now we have a preliminary design that's a little bit more specific about where we would have to smooth out some corners and where we may have to take some trees. That is going to be presented to those residents within the next week or two. I think the letter went out yesterday. Yeah, I mm -hmm. saw the big uh, sign out there saying yeah. North Street paving or something. So that yeah. that is still very much a conceptual conversation. So our MassWorks grant application this round is tied to the potential development of pine sand and gravel for additional mm -hmm. industrial or warehouse space. And that would require improvements to North Street including the potential for a water tank. Now you say, why would you do a water tank? If you think of a map of Douglas, most of our water resources are in the central and western section of town. And most of the people who are on the water system live in the eastern mm -hmm. section of mm -hmm. town. And our storage capacity is on Franklin Street and on Church Street. Mm -hmm. We really need storage capacity on the eastern end of town to pressurize those pipes in that part of town, especially in the event that either one of the other two tanks experiences an issue. So it's shut down because it's refilling or it's being maintained mm -hmm. in some way. There's this sort of bright line across town where at a certain point if something isn't working everybody would be dewatered. So 
as a development proposal, it made sense to talk about trying to have several hundred thousand gallons of water stored. First of all, when we approved, when we, the town, approved North Village, a lot was set aside for a water tank that was part of the comprehensive mm -hmm. permit for the 40B. Mm -hmm. And eventually, the developer convinced the town not to do that. Mm -hmm. And if it went to a pump station, and then there's not even going to be a pump station there now for public water. There's a cistern under the ground for water, for a fire suppression supply. Yeah. We're, we're back to going to use the property that was deeded to the town for a water tank. Because if we have a tank there with sufficient storage, then the flow and pressure at all these industrial sites will exceed specifications. So they will not have to have individual water tanks on their property. So we would be using regularly cycling fresh, clean water through our system, and they wouldn't have stagnant water sitting in a tank on their property. Which is a lot more attractive to it. That reduces their cost to develop here, mm -hmm. which takes the pressure off us to do mm -hmm. any kind of deal with them. We don't need to do mm -hmm. any kind of deal with them for development costs because we're taking it all on through grant-funded projects and their contributions. So both mm -hmm. CRG and Stantec have <coughs> pledged funds towards a water tank project. Mm -hmm. I bring this up to you because this, this will come to you because it is a structure. Mm -hmm. oh. And <clears throat> you know, if you look at the concrete batching plants at Dauphiné's, at Pine Sand and yep. Gravel now, you're looking at buildings that are about 90 feet high. If you want to think of the kind of water tank we're, we're going to be talking to residents about, we're like 110, 115 feet. So just about 20 feet higher than what's there at, in the pit. Mm -hmm. But it would, be in a, it would be behind trees mm -hmm. and further away in town. So to say you won't see it would be silly. You'd be able to see it. But you'd have, I, in my personal opinion, you have to be looking for it. Because if you have a 115-foot structure surrounded by 75-foot-tall pine trees, it's only visible from a certain angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, but in terms of what it would do for the town, it would give us really significant improvement in terms of our resiliency and our security for our water supply, mm -hmm. uh, for our residents as well as for the fire suppression systems in the buildings. And that's a that's a valuable thing that we should be trying to pursue. So mm -hmm. that's part of this discussion. And frankly, most of the expense. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest of the expense would be stormwater management on the upper section of North Street mm -hmm. and a significant increase in the capacity of the water pipes that go up that, that hill. Mm -hmm. So I think we'd be going from six inch to twelve. Mm -hmm. So that's a that's a really big difference for right. plumbers out there. So yep. what's your expectations on a timeline? Years? A couple of years, yeah. I mean, it's going to depend on whether the MassWorks grant is awarded to us or not. Um, they kind of bought into this. Yeah. <laughs> right? They really, they being the state, between Sutton, Douglas, and Uxbridge, over the course of the last 10 years, the state has invested a tremendous amount of money mm -hmm. in these grants for infrastructure improvements in this part of the state, all for the good because the building's getting built and occupied. So yep. I would be very surprised if we weren't competitive in this round. I don't know how much we'll get. I don't know if we'll have to apply more than once, but I'm pretty sure we'll eventually be successful. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Questions, comments? We good? Good. Are you still there, Fred? Yeah, I'm good. No okay. questions, thank you. All right. Okay, we do not have minutes from our last meeting, so we'll probably be getting them uh, at our, for our next meeting. We have upcoming meetings August 16th and September 20th. Um, anybody have any issues right now with those dates? Uh, I will be on the Zoom again as I'll be traveling in the D.C. Okay. area for that week. Okay, for which one? Which one or both? In August. Uh, in August, okay. And I, I really appreciate all of you letting me know that you can or cannot attend, because then I have to make a judgment. If we don't have a quorum, um, we don't want to get everybody here and, that can make it and uh, cancel, because we need to move a, ahead with all these projects that are being put towards the forest. So thank you again for doing that. Um, 
Any other comments, questions? No? Okay, and thank you, Matt, for all this information. Um, if there are no further discussion, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn at 4... 49. 49. I second. Okay, motion made and second um, by Linda and second by Ray. <coughs> Excuse me. 449. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Thank you.